this was to have been the 22nd year of the Boston Theatre Marathon, an annual event where some 50 10-minute plays are performed live in one marathon session. Well, undaunted, its organizers have moved forward online, every day at noon on Zoom. Here's a look at one recent rehearsal. What can I do for you, Captain Doc? Mm, you can call me Ganny, first of all. Updating. As you wish, Ganny. Oh, God almighty. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. I forgot how boring you were straight out of the box. I'm unable to contextualize that remark. Yeah, I bet. Kate Snodgrass, Artistic Director of Boston Playwrights Theatre and the Boston Theatre Marathon, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm happy to be here. (laughs) So let me just start by asking, this is a frenzy, the Boston Theatre Marathon. Uh, Give us a sense, before we go into what's new about it, what you do in this marathon every year. Well, um, it is a frenzy. You're right. Uh, We do 50 10-minute plays in 10 hours, and each one is supported by a different New England theater company. So we get about 400 entries each year. We weed them down to 50. We get the the best known actors, the most experienced actors, and and some of even students who are uh, just starting their careers. So it really runs the gamut and each theater company casts their own play. So, you know, who they know, it depends. And every actor in the, in the city is available. Of course, this year you had to change everything. And, and I really applaud you. I've seen what you've done because you were faced with a situation where obviously you couldn't present this in person as you've just described you normally do all in one day, but you put it on zoom, you've done something different and it's working. What did you decide to do and how are you doing it? It's really been sort of oddly fun in that each theater company sort of puts their play on, but they use, some of them use sound, some of them use setting even, especially if it's a one person play, they can set it anywhere they want, in a kitchen or a bathroom. Um, And they're using the medium. Oh, thank you. Thank you, God for making Stanley Benson have to go to the bathroom at that moment. I could not have made small talk with that man for another second. We're in our third week of performance now. Uh, As we go along, they get more concise and more, uh, you know, uh, apt for Zoom. So it's been really interesting and fun. What have you noticed about how people are joining in and what the feedback has been? Well, the feedback's been great. I think when, you know, we're all separated, all alone in our houses. And to come together like this has been really, uh, it's been a joy for me. I was surprised. I thought, no, oh, this is work. But it's not, it's not work. It's what we love to do. And we get to be together. I remember when we spoke about this for radio at the very beginning, and you, wouldn't, you weren't sure what would happen necessarily with video as a medium. So what have you seen? Well, what, what are the lengths to which people have gone now, uh, now that they're not necessarily confined to a building and or a stage? Right. Um, uh, well, one play comes to mind uh, was a one-woman play set in a bathroom, and she entered as, as the play would, as going on stage, and then talked to the mirror as she would in the play. Why was Stanley being so nice to me? Is he really drunk? He didn't seem that drunk. Is he separated? (sighs) Not that it matters much anymore. Stuart wouldn't notice or care if I had an affair. So that play lent itself, you know, to this medium. You know, there was a fight on stage and the the actors were grappling back and forth on Zoom. Um, (laughs) Someone showed a flower uh, that they smelled. They really... It's been absolutely thrilling to see what people come up with. What's the range of subject matter you see uh, presented in these plays? And to go back to a point you made earlier, are they juried? How do you decide who gets into the Boston Theater Marathon? Well, they are juried somewhat um, because we do get 400 entries. So uh, we we have readers that, that take a look at all of the plays and then they come together 
Um, uh, they send the best plays that they think are the best plays to the final readers. There's tragedy, there's comedy, there's farce, there's satire, political satire. There's, uh, you know, you can't, you can't lose. Uh, the 10 minute plays, it's so, sort of like a um, uh, Cracker Jacks, you know, you, you take one and, <laughs> and you have to have another. Uh, plus the good news is that, that, you know, in nine minutes it's over. If you don't <laughs> like it, you can go on to the next day. <laughs> well, I'm also very much intrigued about, and this is your area of expertise, of course, what can be accomplished in 10 minutes? I mean, how do you guide people? Is there a rule of thumb or how do you, how do you uh, characterize it? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I like to think of a 10 minute play as a, as a crisis point. Usually, you know, uh, the genre allows one thing to happen and then the play is over. So it's, it's deceptively simple and deceptively hard at the same time. You have to let us know who these people are, what the problem is, and then resolve the problem in 10 minutes. Stop doing it. Hey, hey, just tell me when you're going to stop doing it. Now, now, I'm going to stop now. I don't believe you. Well, it just occurred to me too that the it's a challenge for the actors. You you have no time to ramp up. You have no time to get into your character development. You have to be there. You have to know the backstory absolutely. And I think most uh, most of the rehearsals of the plays have to do with that. What has happened before the play begins? And once you make that choice, then you're up, you know, up ramping up as you say, to to conflict. No disrespect, but if a Parisian ate this, they would vomit. That's the unvarnished truth. They would vomit all over your Target tea towels. My mother made these towels, not Target. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, the pattern looks generic. I thought it was mass produced. The wonderful part of this, too, is that it benefits the Theater Community Benevolent Fund, uh, which is a fund, well, I'll let you explain why it, that fund in particular is so necessary right now. It's so necessary, yes. Uh, we've been uh, supporting the Theater Community Benevolent Fund for 22 years now. And um, what it does is uh, allow theater artists in the area who are in trouble or theater companies in trouble uh, to apply to the fund so that they can get help. So it's, it's vital now, especially, because we're all out of work and theater companies are dark and I, I worry that we'll lose some theater companies because of it. So we, we put in a, a, a link to the Benevolent Fund and also to the theater company every day that we support where you can give to that company and everybody needs it. So I hope, I hope people will give. <laughs> well, Kate Sondgrass, thank you so much for being with us and, and for all of your innovation over the last few weeks. Congratulations. Thank you. 